Venezuela. No one wants to take responsibility for it. We've heard time and time again that it's not fair to judge socialism based on the performance of Venezuela's economy, or the economy of any other socialist state for that matter. And whenever a socialist state fails, the argument is inevitably made that this was because they either weren't really socialist or fell due to factors outside of their socialism. And while no nation in the real world can perfectly match a theoretical ideal, Venezuela is about as close to socialism as a country can get. In fact, Venezuela's government either meets or comes very close to meeting each of the ten tenets of a socialist government that Marx lays out himself in the Communist Manifesto. So, with Venezuela is clearly a socialist state, how can Marx's practices not be in any part to blame for its collapse? One of the main arguments cited by apologists is that Venezuela isn't collapsing due to socialism, rather its dependence on oil in lieu of serious losses in the average cost per barrel. It's true that the cost of oil has dropped immensely, but how much of the failure of the state of Venezuela can be attributed to this? Well, not only is Venezuela not the largest exporter of oil, it isn't even the most oil-dependent nation. It ranks in eighth place for that. Yet, according to the IMF, of the 15 largest oil exporting countries, Venezuela's economy has tanked more dramatically and persistently than any other. In fact, it's the only country in the group which was in recession through 2014, 2015, and 2016. For years, Venezuela's economy seemed to be doing okay. But this was illusory. See, when an economy grows, that can be because they're making more good stuff, or it can be because the stuff they already have is increasing in value. The latter was the case in Venezuela. Under socialism, there wasn't as much incentive for individuals to invest in harvesting more oil or for workers to be more productive. This was seen in other areas of the economy as well. Steel production, for example, fell by more than 70% after it was nationalized in 2008. So their oil supply stayed at about the same level, even shrinking a bit. And this was masked by the fact that the price of oil was increasing. But unfortunately, prices didn't increase forever. Thing is, even when oil prices were at an all-time high, the Venezuelan government lacked funds. But like a good socialist state, they refused to stop spending. So they monetized their debts, flooding the economy with extra cash and creating a crisis of hyperinflation. As a result, people are now starving in the streets, struggling to have their most basic needs met and suffering in other ways most of us living in developed and free nations may never understand. These kinds of mishaps are the inevitable result of central planning. A market economy isn't perfect, but it allows for people who are good with specific resources to accumulate and manage large supplies of them, whether it be oil, steel, food, or any other important resource. Under socialism, management of precious resources is left up to whomever happens to be empowered by a whimsical and politically operating state to oversee production, and mismanagement almost always ensues. The resulting chaos eliminates countless human lives and creates more unnecessary human suffering than can be quantified. When bearing witness to this kind of injustice, don't allow proponents of the theories which led to it to fall back on the cop-out that it wasn't real socialism. This is cold comfort to the millions who were promised a Marxist utopia just a few years ago and are now eating family pets just to stay alive. And it'll be cold comfort to you if you let them destroy your country. Hey folks, thank you so much for watching. If you find this content valuable and would like to help the people who worked on it to get paid, please donate at subscribestar.com slash freedomtunes or to donate using PayPal at freedomtunes.tv slash hashtag slash donate. Thank you so much.